Hello and welcome to Independent VFX. I'm Scott Newman and in this tutorial we are going to take a look at how you can create a shot like this one using shot footage and video copilot element 3D in After Effects. So before you start there are a few things you'll need. We recommend you run Adobe After Effects CS6 or later with video copilot element version 2 or later installed but if you don't own element then there is a workaround uh, we'll cover that in a minute or two. You will need to download the blue screen shooter footage or shoot your own footage to work with. And you will need the independent VFX 3D rifle shell model or a similar model. Um, you can use one of the models from the projectile weapons pack if you have it. Or you can dig around and find a free 3D bullet model on the web. Optical flares is really nice to have for this tutorial. But again, if you don't have it, um, you can follow along using the standard flares in After Effects. Smoke elements, uh, there is some great smoke footage in the Video Copilot Action Essentials Pack. That's what we've used, but again, you can also download some excellent free smoke uh, stock footage from Action VFX. Now, before we get started, here are a few details on the footage elements. We have made the blue screen shooter video available on TurboSquid. You can either click the links in the description below this video, or you can head over to TurboSquid and type independent VFX into their search box. There are two versions of the shooter footage available. There is a 1080p HD ProRes QuickTime version, uh, which is the paid version. This version has been resampled from a 4K resolution video. It's loopable, so if you stack the clip end to end, um, you can create a shot of any duration. And what's great is this version has the bolt carrier moving inside the ejection port, as well as a shell being extracted and a new round being fed into the chamber. So it's set up and ready for you to start animating your 3D ejecting shells on top of it. A lot of time went into shooting and making this piece of footage uh, and it's a great way for you to support our channel. So thanks in advance to those of you who do decide to go with the paid option. We really do appreciate your support. Thank you. But then we don't ever want to exclude anyone from learning and following our tutorials. So we've made a watermarked free version of this video available. The watermarked version is a 720p H.264 QuickTime file. It's also loopable, but it doesn't have any animation on the ejection port. But it will color key properly and it'll work just fine as a base layer for your project. We have also made the independent VFX 3D rifle shell model for Element, available on TurboSquid. It's also a paid product and once again, I would encourage you to use this model um, but of course you can use a bullet shell model from the Video Copilot Projectile Weapons Pack if you own that. Or you can search around the web and find a free 3D bullet shell model to use and you can texture it yourself. If you don't own a copy of Element, then you can substitute all of the 3D rifle shell components of this project with stock footage. Um, we've got some great free loopable stock footage of uh, bullet shells on our page independent VFX and you can also head over to Action VFX and grab some of their free bullet shell footage. Right, so with all of that said, let's get started. So I've got a brand new After Effects project open here. I've just imported my slow motion shooter footage. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it into a comp. And the first step is gonna be to key this blue background out. So let's start by renaming our comp. We'll just call it Shooter Key. So let's go ahead and apply a color key. Um, I originally used Primat Keyer, uh, which works really well if you have it. It's got a great auto key function which does everything for you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use keying and I'm gonna use key light, which comes with After Effects. So let's go ahead here and choose the color picker and just pick a blue anywhere out of this background. Um, let's say there. And again, looks like a great key. Let's just change this to screen mat so we can see what's going on. Um, I don't know if it's clear here, but there is a little bit of noise in the head. And there's a little bit of background noise here. So let's go ahead and just pull our screen gain up a little bit to about 105. And let's go to our screen mat controls and let's clip the black also by about five points. And let's just clip our white by about five points and that should clean that right up. So there we've got a really nice clean key on our shooter. Let's go ahead and change this back to final result. So there we've got a nice clean perfect key on our shooter. So what we'll do is we'll take the shooter key and we'll drop this into another comp, we'll loop it. 
Um, so let's go ahead and just make a new comp. I'll call this shooter loop. And I want this comp to be six seconds in duration. Uh, it's an HD comp. I'm working at 25 frames per second. You can obviously force this clip to be whatever frame rate you like. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're at 25. So there's my new comp. I'm going to take the shooter key comp. I'm going to drop it in once. I'm going to duplicate it. Control D or Apple D. And I'm going to hold shift and just move it forward till it's end to end with the other clip. And what we've got here now is the footage is looped. There's one shot, he settles and then bang, there's the second shot. We've got a six second comp with two shots going off and our shooter is perfectly keyed. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take shooter loop and I will make a new comp which I'll call master comp. This is the comp where everything's going to happen and I'll take my shooter loop, drop it in. I'm going to go ahead and make the shooter a 3D layer. Um, for position I will leave it at zero because I'm going to want this layer to be the center of everything for this comp. And at this point I'm also going to go ahead and add a camera. Um, you can use anything from a 24 up to say a 35 for this shot. And uh, what you're going to want to do is open up your shooter properties here, material options, and you want to say accept shadows off, accept lights off, because you don't want your 3D lighting system to affect this layer. We will rather affect this guy through levels and color correction and that kind of thing. Um, so our lighting is going to be in the scene purely to give us our flares with optical flares, and the lighting will also be there to influence our 3D bullet model. So let's go ahead and add a background to this. So I'll make a new solid, just a pure black solid. Let's just check it's black, it is. That can go to the very bottom of our comp and let's call that background. I won't go and make this a 3D layer because it's always gonna stay in the background. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add another solid. Um, and what this next solid will be, I'm gonna apply fractal noise to it. It's gonna be our kind of misty, hazy rain layer that blows through the background. So we could call this Misty Rain, I suppose. And let's make this a 3D layer. And what I will do is also just come to its material properties and I'll say accept shadows off, accept lights off. Um, and let's go ahead and apply effect noise, fractal noise. What I want to do as well is start pushing this into the background in Z space. So I'll push this back to around, let's say, I don't know, 2000 pixels deep. And then I'm gonna scale it up again so that it fills the frame. And I'll actually scale it a little bit bigger than the frame just to compensate for any camera moves um, that might end up showing the edge of the layer. So let's go ahead and animate this, this uh, fractal noise so that it travels through frame as if wind is kind of blowing it along. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna um, zoom out we are working at half res here just to keep things nice and speedy. Um, I'm going to come to my fractal noise controls here under transform for offset and I'll keyframe it at frame zero. Also for my evolution I will keyframe it at zero. Then I'm going to scrub ahead to the end of my comp and I'm going to use the offset controls here just to shift it out a little bit until I can see that control point. Then I'm going to grab that control point and kind of drag it off to the right and I'm going to drop it down. Uh, like I said, as if wind and gravity is affecting this misty layer. And the evolution, I will say, go through, I don't know, let's try sort of four revolutions. Um, I'm going to just zoom back in and let's do a RAM preview so you can see what we're getting. Actually, last thing I'm going to do is just scale up this noise um, somewhere there, you know. I just think that kind of fits the scene better. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So there you have it, there's our misty layer kind of blowing through the background. Uh, perhaps the evolution's a bit quick, so I'll just tone that back. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, remember, this is supposed to be a slow motion scene, hence the fact that the wind is moving so slowly through the frame. Um, but like I said, let's just tone that evolution down to probably half of what it is now. So I'll just say two revolutions. Um, right, so let's go ahead and add our lights and our flares. So I'm going to come up here and go layer, new, light, 
I'm going to make it a point light. For now, the intensity can be 100. Um, and let's just say OK to that. I'm going to go ahead and rename this light. I'm going to call it Back Flare 1. And let's push this back in Z space. I'm going to go ahead and push it probably, I don't know, 1,500 pixels behind our shooter. Just so that if there is a camera move, it feels like these flares are in the distance. They're in the background. They're not in the same plane as the shooter. I'm going to go ahead and slide it off here to the left. And I'm going to move it up in the Y axis. So it's just off screen over here. And then I'm going to duplicate that flare. Uh, so it's now back flare 2, and I'm just going to drag it in the x-axis off to the right. And of course, it's not affecting any of these layers in our scene because I did disable that function. Um, so now on top of our misty rain layer, let's go ahead and add another black solid. I'm going to call this background flares. Um, no need to make this a 3D layer because we are going to apply video copilot optical flares to it and use the 3D function within optical flares. So let's go effect video copilot optical flares. So by default, we just get a flare in the middle here. What I'm going to say here is instead of source type 2D, I'm going to say track lights. And there you can see the flares have jumped to these two lights in the scene. Uh, what I want to do next is change the look of my flares. So I want to come to options and under the light presets, I'm going to choose probably this evening sun preset or perhaps real sun. One of these nice softish kind of flares. Uh, let's go for real sun. And what I might want to do is just at a later stage hide these lens reflections. But for now, we'll say OK. And there you can see we've got these nice soft washy flares happening. Um, and of course, what's great now is if I come to one of my 3D lights and I hit T to access its intensity, you know, as I boost the intensity of the light, it boosts the intensity of the flare. So perhaps here we do want to create a bit of an imbalance. If we look at our shooter, you know, he does have a bit more illumination on the left. So let's go ahead and just up the potency of that light on the left a bit. Uh, let's maybe the light on the right, let's drop it down in the y-axis a little bit to about there. And um, that looks pretty good, happy with that. So let's come to our background flares layer. I just want to take some of this warmth out of the flares. So I'm going to come and apply effect color correction, hue saturation. And I'm just going to pull about half of the saturation out somewhere there in the 50s. Um, I'll show you what it's doing. That was before, this is after. Let's just zoom in and look. Um, so that's what we have now, that's what we had before. So just pulling a bit of color out of these flares. Then we want to take this flares layer and set it to screen or add, uh, just so that it starts blending with our misty rain layer, which is obviously way too potent. So let's take that and pull the opacity right down on that, uh, somewhere in that realm, I guess. And now what we want to do is also up the contrast on our misty rain. So let's come here to contrast in fractal noise and lift that somewhere there. And let's also bring our brightness down probably somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and looking at this now, I feel like the scale needs to go up even more. So probably something like that. That feels pretty good. And um, I think to our background flares, I will also apply effect color correction levels. What I want to do is um, I want the bright parts to really be bright and I want the dark parts to really be dark. So we'll start by grabbing this left hand slider to bring to sort of crush the darker parts of the image. And then I will probably also just bring in the highlights a little bit. And now what I want to go and do is just add a third flare sort of behind our guy here for definition. But I don't want to do it with a light um, because these two lights are going to be great for lighting our 3D shells that we're going to put in later. I don't actually want a third light to influence the lighting on the 3D model. So what I'll do is I'm just going to make another black solid and I'll call this middle flare. And for this middle flare, um, again, what we'll do is set it to screen just so that it allows the layers underneath it to show through. I'll also make it a 3D layer 
Again, I will have to access material options and say shadows off, lights off. And uh, for this layer, I'm just going to solo it. Let's go ahead and add a standard After Effects lens flare. So generate lens flare. Um, and let's try the 105 mil. Bring this to the center. It's maybe a tad bright. Bring it down to sort of that kind of spectrum. Um, I'm going to quickly apply a Fost Blur. I see they have moved Fost Blur into the Obsolete plugin. So Obsolete Fost Blur, still probably my favorite blur. Um, and let's just soften up that flare a whole lot, something like that. And I'm going to unsolo the layer. Um, and there you can see now that middle flare, if I switch it off and on, you can see just giving a little bit of like nice drama and backing to our shooter. Uh, I feel it could probably again benefit from a bit of a crush with the levels, um, just to really kill the blacks and make them solid black um, and maybe pop the highlights a bit. And then what I'll probably do is just scale up this layer. Uh, what I actually need to do as well is push it into the background. So let's open up position for it and push it back to say 2000 pixels. It's now dropped behind our misty rain. So I'll bring it forward a little bit and scale it up. Somewhere there and then let's just move it into a slightly better position. Something like that feels pretty good. And then at this point, I think I want to come and access my shooter and I want to just crush his levels down a bit. So effect color correction levels. And maybe I will just crush the blacks ever so slightly and perhaps take the gamma and just work a whole lot more contrast. You know, this is where you've kind of got to decide what's working for you. I'll probably leave this at about 0.9. Um, and again, you know, once everything is working together, we can come and relook this and decide where to push it. Um, but essentially, that is the basic setup for the look of the scene. Uh, as I mentioned, you can come and tweak the brightness of your lens flares. Um, you can change the speed of your misty rain. Um, but I'm very happy with the look we have going here. And the next step would be to start adding in our muzzle flash.